Neil is a friend as well as colleague from BlackRock. This is back in the day, uh, which was my first job after school, really. And a lot of what I learned about risk management when I joined was from Neil uh, and was, was fantastic to have him as a mentor, a friend, uh, someone I look up to, respect, and been following his entrepreneurial journey, which has been fantastic to see and uh, want to chat about it more now. So thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. And uh, do, do you, do you want to start with just uh, sharing your your journey prior to starting Drip, and then we can talk about Drip. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, just on my on my personal and professional background. So, I um, let's see. I grew up in in Hong Kong. My parents are from India, and uh, they migrated to various countries, and um, and eventually settled in Hong Kong. And so, I grew up there, um, and. Uh, I moved to the U.S. for for college. Uh, was a computer science major um, from Stanford, and you know when I graduated, which was in 2001, there were basically no uh, the opposite of now. There were basically no computer science jobs, and so um, I basically went into into finance. And um, you know the second job I had uh, was at BlackRock, and that's where um, Suraj and I met. And he's being very generous. If uh, uh, saying that I've taught him about risk management. I think he taught me. So, um, and, and uh, I was there for a, a number of years um, uh, as basically as an analyst and for a little bit of time as well as a trader. So I sort of escaped to business school, um, went to Wharton, uh, and I was there for two years. It's actually where I met my co-founder. And, you know, we didn't know we were going to be um, working together at the time, but we were just good friends, became good friends. And then after that, uh, I moved to the West Coast, the Bay Area. I basically followed my wife who had a job here in the Bay Area at the time. And uh, um, I got a job, sort of a very classic big company job at Cisco. Uh, they have an acquisition group and a venture group. And I was there for about two and a half years. And then after about, um, I'd say about a year, I felt sort of unfulfilled in the job. My co-founder and I started to talk um, it was about a year into the job. And then uh, he was in, in, he is and was in India and I was here in, in, in basically in Palo Alto. And so we were talking every, every two, three days for, for like a year before we had the kind of the guts and the conviction to leave our jobs. And, um, and so we left our jobs actually a long time ago. It's been almost seven years in 2014. And from there, um, you know, the journey started and, um, and so it's um, uh, been a very interesting journey the last seven years. And uh, I'll talk through that in, in some detail, really starting from, uh, from the very beginning to where we are today. And, and today, um, you know, the company has um, about 140 employees. Uh, we have uh, offices in, um, in India and in Palo Alto and in Mexico City. And I'll talk more about what the, the company does. And, um, you know, we're a finance fintech company. Uh, we provide small business lending. You know, we'll have lent um, about a billion dollars by the end of the year. Uh, you know, we've raised lots of funding from, you know, the top VCs, Sequoia, Excel, Wing, Y Combinator. Um, but, um, and then we've also raised about 200 million in debt. And so the company sort of really scaled up from where we were, uh, you know, as recently as three and a half years ago when we were just two co-founders. And so the, the, the journey from 2014 to 2017 really was the two of us. And then from 2017 to now it's been from two to about, about 100, almost 150. Um, so yeah, I'll talk through this journey and um, you know, it sounds like we'll have lots of time for questions would be great, which would be great. Um, Fantastic. Thank you. Yes. yes. So uh I think uh, I'll start from the beginning. Um, you know, uh, a lot of stuff is focused on sort of the the, the overnight success, but you know, um, you know, sometimes you have the seven or ten or twenty year overnight success. So the, the two of us uh, sort of left our jobs in 2014. So it's been seven years, and um, and when we left our jobs, we really didn't have an idea of what exactly we wanted to work on. We knew we wanted to do something with like lending and data. And um, we had a bunch of ideas on a spreadsheet and, um, 
And uh, so, we, so we sort of left our jobs and uh, my co-founder Pushkar, uh, him and his wife and, and his, uh, his family live in India, but he came out here because we were looking at initially ideas just focused on the US. And he stayed with my daughter and my wife and me for uh, about uh, nine months over the course of about a year and a half you know, in our home. Um, and so we looked at a lot of different markets, um, you know, healthcare lending, lending for elective procedures like, you know, uh, orthodontists, um, lending for people that uh, don't have insurance. So we looked at a lot, a lot of the healthcare space. We looked at lending to app developers because, um, you know, app developers have to wait uh, to get paid. Um, and then, you know, we looked at um, a lot of different ideas, but the challenge we had was that we were looking at ideas very academically and we weren't actually, and we were talking to customers, but by talking to customers, we weren't actually figuring out whether they wanted the product or not. And then um, I remember I went to a lending conference and uh, these conferences were expensive. So like we had to like volunteer to, to get into these, these conferences because it cost like four or $5,000. And uh, the volunteering was, was frankly a bit annoying. And um, I remember uh, one successful entrepreneur, someone I perceived at the time said, hey, lending entrepreneur, like if you think you have an idea, you need to lend money. You can't just ask people. And then we were thinking, like, how do we get money? And he said, well, take some of your own money and lend it out. And so that's what we did. Uh, you know, we took, we took, you know, thousands of dollars of our own money and started to lend it out. And um, the way we got, we were looking at B2B customers. Our first idea was, um, and this is actually really important. Uh, you know, if you're a small business and you have uh, a big break with a Whole Foods or a Target, uh, that first big purchase order, that first big PO, uh, you know, how do you get the money to fulfill that order? That was sort of the first real idea I feel like we had that we tested. And so, you know, how do you find B2B customers? And we read a lot of Paul Graham's essays, Y Combinator's uh, Paul Graham, PG's essays, and they were really well written. And, and so they said, you need to talk to your customers. And so that's what we really learned uh, early on, which was talking to customers. And so we went to trade shows um, and uh, we literally walked these large trade shows and we would just talk to like every booth owner. Um, and, uh, you know, we would pitch a product to them, this product. And, uh, you know, after going, so, so that was the initial experience, um, you know, hey, uh, we're Drip Capital, you know, are you interested in this product, right? We jump into it really fast. And, uh, and we got a lot of no's. Um, I think we talked to about um, 3,000 customers over the span of a few months, sort of person to person. And we figured out you could talk to 150 customers or 200 customers in a day as one person walking booth to booth. Um, but we learned a lot about the businesses. And, um, and we learned that, uh, I mean, and, and we got five customers after all that, right? Um, and, uh, and so um, what we learned is, hey, um, no one really, like, like these businesses really, there was a glut of money in the US in 2014, 2015. And, uh, you know, we were getting the bottom, bottom of the barrel sort of kinds of businesses that were not credit worthy. And so the market sort of seemed saturated to us. Um, and so we were really down. This was in 2015. We were feeling kind of down around this time. It had been a year and a half and, you know, we felt we had nothing. And so we were thinking of quitting and, um, and then we got into sort of why we, in the middle of this idea, we actually got into Y Combinator. And <clears throat> I think that experience going through an accelerator was just really important um, back in 2015, because we learned to push very hard on BD and we learned to set like two week targets for ourselves. And so that forced into us a culture that we have until today, which was to have very, you know, sort of two week targets, really focus on BD and growth and sort of the everything we learn comes from the customer and comes from growth. And, and, uh, and so that was uh, really important for us. And the pace at which we worked then was very, very fast during that period. And we've kind of kept that discipline and that pace on uh, since, since 2015. And so, 
uh, this was end of 2015. And then my co-founder went back to India at that point and I stayed here. And then um, we, we had an interesting insight and that insight at the time was um, a lot of the customers we were talking to in the US uh, needed money to pay their overseas suppliers. Um, and it was their overseas suppliers or their exporters that actually uh, wanted to get paid up front um, or wanted to get paid earlier than they would in the cycle. And, and so, um, so my co-founder then in India started to market to um, Indian sellers. And the pivot we had was let's talk to Indian exporters that are selling to US buyers. Um, and let's offer them a product where we would pay them upfront at the time of shipment. Um, and uh, and uh, the US buyer would then pay, pay, back, pay us back later. So effectively the idea was the idea that we are, we're doing today, which is uh, basically factoring, factoring, which is, you know, you have an exporter, let's say in India that's selling, I don't know, um, uh, rice to Costco. Uh, in the US and the exporter, um, you know, has to wait 120 days to get paid. And they can't wait 120 days to get paid because they have to pay their own suppliers. They have to pay for their labor. They have to procure raw material. So we pay them up front uh, at the time of shipment when they're shipping the rice from India to the US. And then Costco pays us back directly, you know, call it, uh, yeah, 120 days later. So we float. 120 days of working capital for the business. And so we started to market in India um, and we saw like a, a lot more demand from really good, solid, mostly family owned businesses that were doing, you know, anywhere from half a million a year to 20, 30 million a year of revenue that were around for 10, 20 years that were profitable, that were selling to, um, you know, businesses in the U S and, uh, and so we could see then very quickly, the difference in the level of demand between this idea and then, you know, sort of prior to the pivot, we were fortunate to close like a, a large insurance partner. That was a big break um, early on that helped us sort of offload some of our risk. And, um, and then we found that, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of demand, which is sort of the first thing, you, you know, that matters. And so from there, um, we went out and pitched VCs sort of a second time. And, we got a lot of interest. So we raised, you know, almost $5 million in a, in a really large like seed round. And so we built the infrastructure uh, to lend money. We built the, you know, um, the underwriting and, and all, you know, the, uh, what we call the servicing and the basic data infrastructure, you know, and then in 2018 uh, uh, is when we really grew our team. So we went from 10 to like 80 people, a lot of it in sales and marketing. Um, and similarly in 2019 and, and our credit model ended up working out really well, but we had to build out all these teams like HR operations, product engineering. And, and so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that went into that. Um, and we were learning a lot on the way we ended up, uh, raising our B, um, in 2019, I think, uh, and hopefully that gives you some insight into our, our story and, uh, hopefully there's enough time for questions and some, some back and forth. So, yep. That was fantastic. Th uh, thanks 